from Kindling Wild and today I have a big summer morning basket homeschool book haul to share with you. I am so excited. So let's dive in. So a little bit of background about our homeschool. Um, we've been homeschooling for two years and I have three boys and their ages are eight, four, and almost two. So a major component of our homeschool is our morning basket and we use a bit of a Charlotte Mason type of style and we're really relaxed in our homeschool. So I always have to get more books. It's been kind of hard not having the library open but now our library is open for pick up and drop off. So that was really exciting. I do have a couple more resources that I'm hoping to still get, but um, this is mostly it for the next few weeks. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna just get to showing you what we'll be reading. First of all, we're continuing, we're about halfway through our chapter book read aloud that we're reading right now. It's a Brian Jakes book called Lone Hedge. And if you're not familiar with these series, um, they're really fun. It's all about like woodland creatures. And I always find it to be a nice read, especially in summer, like the, the creatures are running around the woodland and usually there's lots of feasts. So it makes you want to eat like, I don't know, really good. <laughs> and um, we've just been really enjoying sort of making snacks and reading this on the deck and stuff like that. So we'll be continuing with that. It's super long. Um, next, I will just show you the picture books that I have sourced right now. Um, most of these are new, so that's exciting. And uh, we... I swear, one day I'm gonna like do my hair for this. One day, and then I won't know what to do with myself. Anyway, so first of all, we have Brambly Hedge Summer Story. And I was able to get this from our library. If you haven't read Brambly Hedge, get it. it they're so cute. I think they're several decades old, um, but they're just kind of like those classic stories that you always enjoy with gorgeous illustrations. It's just about like all the little woodland creatures that live in this hedge, and it's really sweet, and the pictures are so intricate. My kids love them. So we'll read that in our morning basket time. I love having good picture books in our morning basket time. It works well for all the age groups. And I mean, if you have a really high quality picture book, there's no such thing as outgrowing it. Um, oh, that reminds me, I actually forgot one upstairs. I'll have to run and get it. This one is from our library at home. Um, it was a must have for me because I had this book growing up and I had to own it. And I love pulling it out for summer, Jamberry. So we like to have, you know, berries and go berry picking. And we have wild raspberry and strawberry in our yard. And we actually have some cultivated strawberries that are hopefully going to grow really well this year. It's just the sweetest book and it's written in verse. Um, my two-year-old loves this book, and all my kids love this book. Like, it's just one of those sort of ageless, timeless books I highly recommend. Okay, so the next book that I have is actually another one from my childhood. Like, this is so faded because it, that's how it was on the bookshelf, and I had it since I was little. It's called When the Sun Rose, and I'm telling you, if you can get your hands on a copy of this book, it is so beautiful. It is just this lovely, gorgeously illustrated story, um, and it's about a friend coming to visit, <laughs> and honestly, like, I actually 
cry when I read this book because it's just so beautiful. Right now, all my kids love this book, but my two-year-old particularly loves it too. So it's just like a really nice short one. It has friendship, playing, nature, and just it just is a bit magical, if you know what I mean. So the next book in our read aloud is Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. We actually planted potatoes in our garden this year, so I thought I'm just gonna grab Jamie O'Rourke because I know that I love Tommy DePaula and um, I mean, it's just fun and lovely. And so we'll definitely read this and hopefully our potatoes be well. Um, okay. Oh, Goldfish on Vacation. This one was recommended last year in the Reader Love Revival like Family Book Club. And I remember listening to the interview with Sally Lloyd-Jones, I think in premium maybe, membership. And I just, really wanted to get my hands on it, but you know, it slipped my mind and there were other books to buy. There's always other books to buy. So I think it's a, it's a, like a dreary summer in the city. And then, um, the kids live in an apartment and they have goldfish. And then, the goldfish go, wind up going to live in that fountain. Um, it's cute. Coming in two weeks, calling all goldfish looking for a summer home. So they get to tell their goldfish they're going on vacation and it just, like all the kids do it. It just seems really nice. My kids live rurally and I think it's going to be interesting to read this with them and have them sort of picturing living in a city and what might that be like, being in a hot apartment in the summer. And I also, I mean, they really like fish. They really like nets. It just looks like a fun book. Um, we, <laughs> we might get goldfish for our, like, rain barrels for, for our chickens. It's kind of in the plan, so that would be kind of fun. Um, okay, next. Rocks a Boxin. This one's been on my wish list for a while as well. I, I think I can blame Sarah McKenzie from Read Aloud Revival for that as well. Um, a good kind of blame, of course. But I didn't read this before as a child and I'm so glad that it was recommended to me because it looks just totally lovely. It's just like a bunch of children sort of free ranging outside, going to play and they build this little town and they just use sticks and rocks and whatever they can find and they just love their life and it's just summer play. So I just thought that would be the perfect story for my kids because that's kind of their niche, sticks and rocks and running around outside. So more in the lovely imagination type of story, I have the antler ship. A friend gave this to us and it is so cool. My kids love maps. And they love that sort of sense of adventure. And I love how there's sort of some friendship themes in here. And some, you know, questions about what is the meaning of life. But like without saying that. <laughs> it's just really, really beautiful. And these 
the Fan Brothers are Canadian illustrators. I'm not sure if the author is also Canadian, but anyway, that is just a really another beautiful book. Um, I think that maybe we're sensing a theme that I'm into beautiful books. At the Pond, here's another one that really is a little bit more geared towards my younger guys, but they, anyone can appreciate the beautiful art. So, I think it's Canadian too. It has hardly any text at all. It's like one fish, two fish, and then, that sounds really Dr. Susie. Um, the fish are coming. <laughs> There's the lovely lily pad, and a frog comes, another frog. They just really like seeing all the things that are happening in the pond, and it's kind of like taking nature observation time and putting it into a picture book and illustrating it, and it's really just so, it's just beautiful. And we might use that as a little bit of drawing inspiration because I love how the shapes stay the same throughout the book and then just the, just beautiful. Okay, and then my last, oh. A Little House Picture Book Treasury. We're probably, the first three are more summery and then the next three are more wintry in this treasury so we'll probably just read the summary ones. We like reading Little House books. We've read a few of the chapter books together. I think we read two this winter, this past winter. But it's always nice to have a picture book style as well. And again, I mean, so lovely. So much nature. That's just my theme. They're having a picnic. We'll probably have to have a picnic. Hard boiled eggs, cookies, bread and butter and cheese. Um, the county fair story is based on Farmer Boy. So. They're just going to love this. I'm really excited to show this one to them. I haven't shown them the new books yet. I've been like, no, you have to wait. Because <laughs> I haven't made it on. Okay. Um, two more picture books, and these ones kind of overlap into our nonfiction. I don't know if I'm going to have time to show you all our nonfiction in this video. It's just going to be way too long. <laughs> Anyway, I got these two, B and Ocean, and they are peek throughs. So it has a hole, and all of the pages are a bit punched out. And these books, it's I have like a love hate on this series. Um. It's written in rhyme. Um, it's not my favorite in terms of like depth of the story or things like that. I think it, they're slightly more of just like a novelty book, but they are pretty and appealing. And I mean, two lines per page is great for my younger guys. And then for my older guy, I like to take these books and and read it, but then it's an introduction to a theme. Now for B, we actually already did B's in the spring, but I mean, there's just no harm in continuing. Um, so we'll just kind of keep talking about that a little bit. And then for Ocean, we actually have been doing a bit of an ocean study like on and off with a few different science experiments and things like that. And so I'll use this one almost like, okay, look. So I'll be like, so here's the 
jellyfish. And can you, you love this book, can you find the jellyfish page in the big book of the blue? So there we go. And then we'll read that in a morning basket time. And it's just like, it's just fun. Just for fun. Thanks so much for watching this super long book haul and I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you're feeling a little bit inspired for things to read with your kids this summer. Let me know in comments if you have any questions and I'm going to try and link to books. I'll type up a list of books and I'll try and link to those below.